Good morning, everyone. I had a wonderful sleep. Very quiet night. It was a very restful night. And now what I'm going to do is to try to get closer to the water. So I'm going to do that and head to Planet Fitness, take my last shower for this day in Vancouver and head back to the nature inshallah oh before that coffee yes coffee is needed and as i don't have dinner at all when i am traveling then it's going to be coffee with a good sandwich so i have to do my research when i'm in planet fitness for a good coffee shop with a really good sandwiches like the one I had in Pemberton mm. that was delicious that was delicious <laughs> Lynx Cafe I will never forget you <laughs> so see ya That bakery is smelling delicious and but I asked from the car I asked if they are open the girl told me that no they are not open yet and I don't remember the times for anything here but one thing that I see is that every single public parking even here where I parked right behind me um, it says 11 to 6 pay parking only after that you can park with no issues without having to pay these are the ferries the beautiful small ferries that one is being cleaned so they are cleaning it they are cleaning them for the day that one as well so these ferries are like that bus that is there that what it does is taking you to different specific but different locations around the water so you can go to the other side of Vancouver um, enjoy shopping and then if you want to come back to Granville Island you take the boat again and you come back um, if you are a person that feels seasick with uh, going on a boat or anything then trust me you don't have a problem with these boats because I feel seasick every time I am on a vehicle on the water and these ferries were fine for me. I didn't feel bad at all. And you pay down there, there. Yes, it is Granville Island, honestly, to me is number one to come, especially for, not only because you are surrounded by, you see the um, you have the contrast of the city and the water. Uh, you have a lot of boats. And you have the market, the market where you have everything natural and fresh. Yeah, oh, this is the recycling and garbage. I have garbage to throw away. So I'm going to do that. It's just a little bit because I haven't been well camping or camping at 
a campground either so I don't have much garbage and right there is the bridge that goes also across the water north and I believe it connects north and just Vancouver North Vancouver and Vancouver we have another bridge there the infrastructure of Vancouver is beautiful and it's very well organized and you have beautiful view views from the bridges as well yeah it's a pity that the park the market is closed at this time done with a quick shower and no mascara today because today is a driving day so let's see if we find a good breakfast sandwich with delicious coffee inshallah trying to find another coffee shop i found this bisu cafe and it's it's a bakery actually bisu bakery and everything is freshly baked um, the beef and the turkey are halal the only thing that is not halal is the ham of course but I got some pastries that's the place and I'm going to enjoy now beautiful service and everything freshly baked so I'm going to enjoy now we are here at the Britannia Mine Museum Britannia Mine Museum and I have to figure out how to get to the museum oh well <laughs> I found it. I found it. This is the entrance to the museum, the gift shop and the cafe. Okay. Only people that comes to the museum, gift shop and cafe can park here. Oh, and there is a store there. Oh my God, that's trouble. Because every time I come to a store, I buy something. There's so many interesting things. Bracelets. Just got a coffee here at the Britannia Museum. I did some damage at the gift shop <laughs> uh, because I love jade. And um, I got a ring and I hope you like it. It's actually a good ring. <laughs> I'm not trying to do that. <laughs> this ring and this jade bracelet. I don't know if you can see it very well. Let me see with the sun then I went to the coffee shop and in the coffee shop at the coffee shop I'm hello Hi. at the coffee shop I got um, delicious coffee and a wonderful chat both at the gift shop with the lady that works there she's magnificent great service super kind as well as at the coffee shop so Britannia mine museum you should come let's see if I can record the the experience
for aiding with me. Please take all personal belongings with you because we want to return to the train and step out from the right side. of the yellow fence so we can have a better view of what's going on. Thank you. We're gonna wait for everyone to be in the right place. And you can always use the space in front of you whenever you prefer. So It's not so easy anymore, right? Can you see now behind you any holes to place a dynamo in there? But you need to free your hands in order to do your job. So all I do is to drill a hole into the wall, place my candlestick over here, and now my hands are free. And let's say that I am able to work. But what do you think? Is it a good idea to have an open flame near to my head and dynamite my pocket? No. <laughs> so smart, thank you. So after 1915, the Canadian government thought so, and they came up with the carbide lamps. Now the carbide lamps were basically simple lamps, pretty popular back in the day. And all I need to do is to place calcium carbide in the bottom, then regular water in the top. And this mix will produce acetylene gas and produce a flame. And now all I have to do is to add a little spark. Compared to kerosene and whale oil lamps, the carbide could stay on around fans and compressed air, whatever is in here. And as you can see, I can see my Mac machine, my dirty Mac stick. Actually, the miners love this invention so much. They're replacing the carbide lamps at the top of their hard hats. But back in the day, they had no hard hats and they had no fireproof gloves. They got something very similar with a baseball cap from cloth. And these things, as you can see, they're far from perfect. First of all, they're open flames in heads. Second of all, the water may start leaking from the bottom and then the whole thing will blow up. That's why I hold mine with fireproof gloves. <laughs> So as you understand, an extra crispy haircut was much in fashion back in the day. And that's why eventually they got forbidden by the Canadian government. They realized that open flames in heads is not the perfect thing to make the mind safe and effective. But then, after 1930s, electricity came and the miners started to use basic electric headlight lamps. And that's our door. The exit really the gift shop. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Fox, do you have any questions about the demonstration? As you can see, this is an air-powered whistle. It's connected with the main system of the mountain. They would pull the whistle at the end of every shift, and they have three shifts per day. They wouldn't do it at the end of the midnight shift. You don't know why you this now. Why? Be sure you cover your ears. It's going to be... Ready? Three, two, one! So 
Kalau Oslo. Kalau saya kata Rafidia. Lucu. Tapi sound you can feel in your house. Yeah. Please come here. The sound of the whistle was so loud because here in Britain they had two communities. The Mount Shear community is all the way up in the mountain, about 20 minutes off road drive, and the Britannia beats down on the lower side. So miners yeah. were from both of the communities, they're working inside, all of them had to be aware of what was happening. I want you to know that Britannia mine didn't sat down because they ran out of copper. There is still copper inside this mountain. They sat down because they had to deal with environmental consequences of mining. I said inside the Britannia mine was the largest copper mine in British Commonwealth, but at the same time was the number one source of water pollution here in North America for the entire North America. Today we use the term acid rock drainage to describe the natural process of the metal sulfides as the copper are exposed to the air or to the rain. So basically what was happening back in the day was all the acidity from the copper, the zinc, the gold through the tunnels was going all the way to the house sound, the Britannia bits. So at the 70s, the world starts to become more environmentally friendly and the Anaconda company had to pay a bunch of extra measures to protect the environment. Also at the same time, the price of copper starts to become way lower than before and they realized from the core samples that the amount of copper still available inside the mountain was no longer enough to cover all the expenses and still make profit. So they just decided to pack and leave. They did nothing to fix it down on yeah. the beach. But fortunately, from 2005, a water cleaning plant facility was all set up and they were able to deal with one of the country's worst cases of water pollution. And now we're able to see again salmon, seals, even orcas back at Britannia Beach. I'm not saying that mining is a bad thing. Just we need to be responsible for what we're doing. And keep in mind that they will use copper only from reusable sources, which means we may all have a toaster, a computer, or a phone with a piece of copper from Britannia Mine. Thank you so much for being with me. This was the copper quest. It's concluded, but the tour is not done. We will go all the way down to the hill, either inside this giant white building with hundreds of windows. The mill to see the boom to explain for us the milling process. So please don't stay behind and stick with the group. The show is going to start in about five minutes. Let's go. Please welcome Abby the interior is always unexpected. You can gather around by the glass fences so we can have room for everyone. Perfect. I wait for everyone to be in the right place and spot. So I want to welcome you at the meal number three, where boom show is going to take place. Why well, I'm saying meal number three? The meal number two is right from the east one side, was burned down back in 1921 after a very mysterious fire. We still don't know what happened back then. So the workers had to work really quick and set a new meal all over again. Because without this building, the mine could not exist. And they did it in 18 months period, in the middle of the winter, a new mill was all set to start producing copper once again, and this year has a 100 years old anniversary. Also, if you're able to see this building is divided on several levels, is a gravity fed mill. Basically, the process will begin from the highest level, coming to the lowest. Right now, we're able to see only the skeleton of the building, we have no machines left. I'm also going to ask you, before I let you to wander around for a few minutes, does this building remind you of anything? Have you ever seen it before? Yeah. How we all see the 100 on Netflix, the Scooby Doo, Supernatural, or the X Files? Also, Flash, Snake Eyes, the Magicians. Oh. All of these movies are filmed inside the mills, and the 100 that sinks from the channels up in the mine. So feel free to wander around for a few minutes, and I'll call you down there to start the show.
music is it wherever you like the boom show the highlight of your tour you are about to experience some loud noises nothing similar as the mine and some if I don't go any further, this is not right for you. You're trapped inside this building. The exit's right there under the green light. You're free to live. Just keep in mind that I won't be able to leave you back until the show is completely over. But you can always do it. go to the next one. Also, keep in mind your screen for the today show is going to be the whole building. Be aware and keep an eye everywhere. With that being said, this remains in it and enjoy the show. Thank you so much. I don't want to go out of the Do you know how many paints of glass there are up there? 14,460. I'm just glad this is the only one I have to keep clean. They let a lot of light into this place, which was great for the electricity bill, but they also let a lot of light out. And as the mill worked through the night, it was a beacon that lit up the waters of House Sound, and it could be heard for miles around. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Welcome to Britannia, once one of the largest copper mines in the world, and to mill number three, which in its day was among the most efficient and advanced copper concentrators. This is why this place was built, all 20 stories of it, to liberate the minerals locked inside massive chunks of ore, just like that. mostly of minerals we don't want, but one in particular we do, calcopyrite, because it contains copper. And if they found a few other valuable minerals in there, well, nobody was complaining. But it was copper that the miners were after, because it was here in such abundance. And because copper conducts electricity better than any other metal, except silver. If electricity is the modern world's lifeblood, then copper serves as its bales of environments. Without... Yeah, uh, sorry. Well, I guess you get the point. How did they actually get the copper from the rock? I thought you'd never ask. Let me show you. I'm in the uppermost level of the mill. The milling process began with the arrival of train cars loaded with ore from somewhere within the mines, 240 kilometers of tunnels. Then the train cars empty their loads into receiving bins below the tracks. The first task was to break up the large chunks of ore in a process known as crushing. Where do they come up with these technical terms? <laughs> The balls tumbled around inside the drums and smashed the rock into even smaller pieces. From there, we go to secondary grinding. Now mixed with water, the ore was washed into more ball mills. And as you can see, there were a lot of them. Consistency of fine sand and water. But now all the different mineral grains in that muddy slurry had to be sorted out. And this is where it gets really interesting. They actually found a way to get rock to float. Well, some of it anyway. In flotation, the ground up rock and water mixture was poured into troughs. Certain aromatic oils were added. So that's the process. That's how mill number three turned rock into copper concentrate. And that's still pretty much how we process minerals today to get the metals that we use in our everyday life. This mill was also the pulse of a community. 
For the townspeople of Britannia Beach, the mechanical thunder coming from this building day and night must have been strangely comforting. Because if they heard those booming sounds, they knew the economy was booming, the mine was producing, and there'd be a paycheck to support their families. I wish there was some way of showing you just how really loud it was in here. Wait, stay with me. I I'm gonna try something here. <laughs> going on here. For one, they were always repairing equipment or installing something new to improve the concentration process. Sometimes a particularly stubborn boulder would get caught in one of the receiving bins and have to be cleared before the next train arrived. And up there, the ship foreman would be told when they needed to deal with it, with a well-placed stick of dynamite. And once in a while, that even blew out the upper row of windows. Fire the hole! Got it. And here comes the ore train. Let's start the conveyor belt. And now for the jaw crusher. part between us. Okay? So, on November 1st, 1974, they shut down Britannia Mayan and Mill Number 3 fell silent. Gone too was the beacon that had shone each night over House Sound. For the community that had always been there to serve the mine, the darkness and silence must have been strangely disquieting. So the people had to move on. But the building itself remains, a testament to all who lived and worked here. And today, it's a National Historic Site. So I hope next time you're driving by, you might have a better understanding of what happened inside this amazing old building leaning against the mountainside. But not everything that happened, because some of that stays between us, right? <laughs> Thanks for coming. You were amazing. Thank you. <laughs>
Thank you. If you want to take great pictures, you can always go up. I've been waiting for so long for this experience. And I didn't put any mascara or anything because I was not ready to do anything today. I was just going to drive to my destination. And I don't regret it. I, 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 I loved it. I loved the experience. I, I showed you everything in my vlog, but nothing compares to being there in person, seeing everything, smelling everything, because you can smell history inside that um, the mine it is amazing uh, so this is the end of the vlog I hope you loved it as I did <laughs> not liked it I hope you loved it as I did and I'll see you in the next one thank you so so much for being here Salam alaikum